Yes, sir. Acts, the 17th chapter. We're going to 16 through 23. All right. So I'm going to focus on these two verses, 23 and 24. It says, For I passed by and held by your, behold your devotions, I found an altar with its inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples, made with hands. 25. Neither is worship with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life, breath, and all things. <clears throat> so tonight we're going to be looking at rocks, gods, and breakable distractions. Rocks, rocks gods, and breakable distractions. All right. mm. A rock is defined as something that is naturally occurring, mm. mineral, a material that is tightly compacted together and petrified. So in the, in the 17th chapter, we find Paul is in Acts, well, well in Athens, Rome. Mm -hmm. And the issue that he found himself being alone with uh, Timothy and Silas, still in Berea, and Paul just walked around the city. You know, he was a tourist. Undoubtedly, he hadn't been there before. So then he grieved, the scripture said, grieved him in his spirit that the whole city was taken by idols. Mm. Now, we talk, we know that this chapter is called Mars Hill. Mars Hill is called Arapagus. Er, 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 I'm sorry, but it means big piece of rock. Right. That's all it is. The mouth was a big piece of rock. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in Greek mythology, this is the place where Zeus, not Zeus, uh, the god of war, Ares, yeah, Ares, was held in trial for killing po uh, Poseidon's son. Mm -hmm. So, mythology, and that's that's one of those distractions that we have to deal with. Okay. Have, have you ever met somebody who was so hard headed? That you try to give them some new information and they just wouldn't accept it. <laughs> you, you ever talk to somebody and you gave them one plus one plus one and gave them the answer and they still couldn't? All right. That, that, that was the issue that Paul was dealing with, being in an area where people were already worshiping so many gods. All right. The historical part of this is that. This mountain had so many temples around it. They even had a temple at the bottom where murderers would go in to hide so they wouldn't have to deal with the conviction that would come from the things that they did. Mm -hmm. Just hard-headed. If you do something, you ought to pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. But they had a way of escape. They not only had a way of escape. Paul walked around this mountain, temple after temple after temple, the issue was, these people found a way to find something else to worship. Okay. Built their own altars, and we're going to worship. Uh, we're going to worship the sun. We're going to worship the wind. We're going to worship the trees. We're going to worship ourselves. We're going to not just worship ourselves. We're going to worship our activities in this other temple. But then Paul get to the top of the mountain, and there's this big rock. Okay. Hmm. To the unknown God. Evidently, there had to be one God that created all this other stuff, so we're going to worship him on the side. Mm. Sounds familiar, right? Mm. Let me ask you this. How important is it for you to know your zodiac sign? Do you know your zodiac sign? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, but it's not important. Huh? I said I know it, but it's not that important. It's not important, but you, you know the characteristics of your zodiac sign, right? And then you do what with those characteristics? Compare. You compare them to yourself, and you keep going back to those characteristics. Why? Is it 
It's supporting you. Or so say you say it's supporting you. That's another part of Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. Zodiac sign is started with 48 gods. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then they kept whittling it down. Mm -hmm. Till you got the 12 constellations that they worship now. Mm -hmm. It's all about pagan worship. Mm -hmm. All about those breakable distractions. Mm -hmm. Once you realize who Christ is, you can break those other distractions. If you're not hard-headed or, or rock-headed. Right. Mama used to say, your head, so, your, head, your, your head may be hard as a rock, mm -hmm. but this extension cord is going to make your butt soft. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so Paul, Paul was so emboldened in his spirit that he sent message to Timothy and Silas and said, come on, mm -hmm. we, we got work to do. Mm -hmm. Scripture say from verse 1 to 15 that there were things that were going on. That the spirit was moving. That Paul was just excited, but he was going to wait for Timothy and Silas to come. But the urgency that we should have as Christians, when we know people are living wrong, mm -hmm. was pushing him. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be better if you had to talk to somebody, if you had somebody else with you? Mm. Would you feel more emboldened? All right. Wow. Let's look at it this way. If there's a rock in the middle of the stream, what 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 does, where does the water go? The it goes around the rock for how long? Until it goes until it breaks down. Until the rock, until it goes yeah. over it. Cut it off. Yeah. Until until the water cuts it off. Until the water overflows it. Right. Right. I was like, so we're gonna look at this. Here is Paul in the city, and then he got his boys coming with to to meet him. What are they gonna be giving out? Word. The word. The word is what? Life is water. It's life. We call it what? Living water. The living water. So they're around, give, give me the picture. They're around this big rock. Okay. And they with the living water. Mm -hmm. And here's Paul saying, I gotta tell you something about this unknown God. Uh -huh. Right? So you have these people, scripture called them stoics. Mm -hmm. So Paul was in a different city. It was different than what he just came from Berea. But in Berea, he still had to deal with the Judaizers. Wherever he preached, mm -hmm. these Judaizers came back and tried to bring them, bring people back to the law. Mm -hmm. But here he was in a city that the Judaizers couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the unadulterated word of God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce you to Christ. I'm going to give you some water that's going to break your rock. Right. <laughs> now the scripture, the, the history of the souls of that, this whole city, they were so smart. But they told Paul, come talk to us. We like hearing new things. You ever talk to somebody that just sat there and just listened to you? Uh-huh. 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 You not getting it, huh? Yeah, I'm getting it. And they repeat back what you said. Uh -huh. But they only heard enough so they can give it back to you. That's it. That's the difference between somebody being a rock and being water. But if you got enough water in you, when you deal with that rock, you can either wear that rock down, mm -hmm. or you can split it in the middle, or you can just over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if we are praying enough, and we are emboldened enough to believe that the talents that we have when we talk to somebody else, mm -hmm. we can change what they hear. Because they'll go from hearing to listening. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's, 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 it's one of those things, Caleb, be talking to me. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I'm listening. No, you're not. What I said. She don't, she don't, she'll stop asking me what you said, what I said. Because I changed the whole situation around. Yes. That's because true. I didn't heard it four or five times. We don't have to talk about it more. So, Paul, we want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear. We didn't hear about the other stories. Yes. We didn't heard about the Red Sea. We didn't heard about all that. We didn't heard about the walls of Jericho. Mm -hmm. See, the word had already gotten out. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you can tell some people listening, they're thinking, well, no, the word didn't get out like that. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if three million people cross the Red Sea, who's not going not to know? The walls of Jericho fell. Mm -hmm. Who's not going to know? Who's not going to tell what happened? Mm -hmm. Who 
who's not going to tell the story? You got healed from alcohol. You got healed from cancer. You got healed from migraine. Who's not going to know your story? Mm -hmm. They, they're not going to hear it, but they'll see it. Come on. And if they don't hear it from you, somebody else is going to tell. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is going to tell the story. So we we, 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 we we looking at this 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 struggle of telling somebody something that's really not new. Mm -hmm. What the information that Paul had to give the Stoics is based out of their historical information. When I say historical information, those things that we have learned and we have settled, other things that are poured into us, we don't want to hear. We can, we can hear it, but we're not going to accept it because it's different from our historical information. Mm -hmm. And we become so settled in what we learned 20 years ago, we become like a rock. Yeah. And that new information passes right by us. We, 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 we can look at this day and age where you can Google it or you can Bing it, and people still don't do it. You've got thousands of years of information in a computer we always have in our hand, and we don't use it. Why? We don't want to know. Huh? There's stuff we just don't want to know. We don't want to know? And then if we do want to know, we want somebody else to do the yeah. research and tell us. Yeah, you want somebody else to put it in work. <laughs> that, that's, that's the difference in being an on fire Christian. That's the difference in knowing who you know and what you know and what you want to be in Christ. Right. I'm a, you're going to tell me something, I'm going to look it up. Mm -hmm. I want to know. I want to know because I got to keep this relationship right. All right. Let's go back to, what was it, 1974, Jim Jones? Mm -hmm. Took those people over to Ghana, Ghana Africa? All they had to do was look at the scripture. Ask questions. Ask questions. Read it. Sometimes water flowing down a hill is not always good. Come on now. Especially if you're at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if, if you're out in the woods and stuff, they're talking about if you find a stream and it's flowing over rocks and water, mm -hmm. and, and what happens to the water when it flows through the rocks and, and the silt? Be clean. It's supposed to be clean, right? But every time all that water flowing down, it's not all of it's not clean. You have to look at it, you have to pick it up, you have to research it. Then you need to put it to some fire mm -hmm. to get them impurities out. Because there are some things that you can't just pick up and shake it out, and it's all right. Yes, we we should we should know that by the politicians we see. <laughs> Nowadays, they, they think they can operate the same way they did 20 years ago. I can tell one group one thing, and this group not going to know. Right. The difference with lying now is being filmed. The difference with our testimony, people will always know. Scripture say, try the Spirit by the Spirit. That's not just us trying them by the Holy Spirit. That's them rotten spirits trying us. Uh -huh. To see where our spirit is locked, is rocked down. That, that is At some point in time, if we're going to be emboldened enough to say, I am a Christian, I am saved, I am who I am in Christ, I'm washed by the blood. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. If you say that, you have to believe it. But not only believe it, you have to stand up for it. Come on. So here we got Paul up there. And he's talking, I'm, I'm trying to grab my beard. <laughs> it ain't there. <laughs> it ain't there. Mm -hmm. with Paul trying to deal with these people and let them know change has to happen now. Because what, what's going to happen tomorrow? Are you going to wake up in the morning? Possibly. If you wake up in the morning, are you going to make it from the bathroom to the kitchen? Come on now. Hopefully. If you wake up in the morning and make it in the bathroom in the kitchen, are you going to make it in the car? Is the car going to start or is it going to explode? Oh. If the car starts, you get on the road. Never thought about it. You don't, we take it for granted. Yes, sir. Take it for granted. Even if you're driving, is this person passing me, cutting me off? Are they going to turn around and shoot in my car? We take it for granted. Lord, 
Get a little fence around me. Give me a hedge of protection on my travel. Mm -hmm. But is that guaranteed? No, sir. It's not guaranteed because we don't know when he's going to call us home. But if, we are, but if we are to be the water, if we are to tell people about this unknown God, can we bounce it off that zodiac sound that we use? So let's step back and talk about these people in, in this city. Now they worship all these other gods, but they believe that the God that was the God of gods was in everything. So they were justified in doing everything. That sounds like us today, right? Say it, sir. Don't judge me. Because the Bible says don't judge. That's, then they don't read the rest of the scripture. Don't Come on. Judge, judge Come on. You know, don't judge me because I don't want you to tell me I'm wrong when I'm feeling comfortable in my wrong. Come on, talk to me. Tell me what you know about God. But don't tell me I have to do it. Don't tell me I have to give up something. Right. Don't tell me I got two side chicks. Don't tell me. I, I ain't got two side chicks. I know you don't want to die tonight. <laughs> Come on now. It has to be. It has to be so important that how we, we how we see ourselves at home with Christ has to be the same way when we outdoors. Exactly. Amen. Because if we're not the same way when we're at home, then we somewhat outside some something else. What are we doing? Lying. Lying. Not just verbally lying. We live in a lie. Mm -hmm. Our testimony is worthless. Right. Our relationship with Christ is right. worthless. So how do you keep a relationship fresh? By what? Talking. Talking. Getting some new words. Some wisdom. Some knowledge. Some, some, it might take some whispering. It might take some shouting. But talk to me. Tell me something. Let me know the connection there. You ever had, you ever had days where you're going around and you're like, man, God, talk to me because I don't feel. You ever had days like that? All right. Not days, but one day. Eight days. Eight days. Because <laughs> if I feel like that a second day, something wrong. Yes, sir. Something wrong. So here you got these people that's worshiping everything. They worship in the 48 constellations of the zodiac. And then they run into this one guy. Who's gonna tell us about this one guy who can change everybody? Hmm. So I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna listen to you. I want you to tell me. But Paul had to change how he talked to them mm -hmm. because in Berea they weren't as educated. Okay. So he go here. Then, these people in this city were uh, are equated to people who had been at Oxford and Cambridge all their lives. Everybody in the city was knowledgeable. So you really couldn't get nothing over on them. You couldn't make up a new story that they wasn't on research. So come on, Paul, talk to us. Tell us about this new God. Now, if you run into somebody, you know they're smart. Can, will they believe your testimony if you skip over a few things? Nope. Nope. <laughs> why, would they, why wouldn't they believe you? Because too many missed voices. Too many, huh? Too many homes. Too many hoes. Not the whole truth. But if God, but if, but that's that's where the hoes come in. That's where your testimony fills is fills that spot. But that relationship has to be active. It has to be prayed up. You think Paul could have just walked to that city and said, "Okay, I'm gonna tell you about Jesus," and not be prayed up, mm. not be trusting? No, sir. You know, we 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 make this statement, "Lord, breathe on me," right? Feel me. But where is the Holy Spirit all the time? He should be in you. He should be in you. Is that 24-7 or is that 15 minutes every hour? 24-7. Should both, both be 24-7. What's the reason we can't feel him? Self. Self. We've been distracted. We've been not communicating. We're not, not just communicating, but sometimes when we talk to God, there has to be a reversal where we shut up. <clears throat> Lord, talk to my heart. Talk to my soul. Talk to my mind. Tell me what I need to break off and let go. Other day, one of my girls, Leo, my other daughter, had posted something about Aquarius, right? Yeah. Talking about how 
uh, people who are Aquarius, if you make them mad, they would say something to make you cry. <coughs> and I say, well, take me off that. I was posted. I say, take me off that list because I'm not that. Then here comes my <coughs> wife. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you grew out of that. <laughs> and I was like, well, God sure did change me. Because it wasn't, it wasn't a Zodiac thing. That's just kidding. Uh-huh. You, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. You kill my dog. I'm going to burn your cat. <laughs> All right, sir. But, I, but God has gotten me to the point. Okay, you will hurt me. That's fine. When, when you hurt me, only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get on my knee, and I'm going to give you to God. Because he says what? Vengeance is mine. Mm-hmm. So you got Paul dealing with these people, trying to tell them a story about somebody that they had never heard of. So undoubtedly, he had to go back to the beginning. And tell them who created stuff. Seven days. He had to go back and give them the rock that, two rocks that then crashed together in space. Those two rocks were God's lips. Let there be. Because you know, astronomers say it was two rocks that just happened, crashed together. Just just happened. And then now they say it's intelligent design. After that happened, God saw it and just came over and started creating. Like he didn't have a hand in it from the beginning. You know, say billion, billion years, mm-hmm. what, 20 million years, and then we came to be and we still evolving? Yes. Then the question has to be, if we still evolving, why are we still the same? Ain't nothing changing. Ain't nothing changing. Why the animals are still the same? So evolution stopped. Does that mean the world ends? They can't answer that question. Can't answer that question, but you're going to give me a story. Story goes like this. When Apollo, was it Apollo 17 landed on the moon? You know why they put the big pads around the bottom of the lunar module? Because there was supposed to be 20 feet of dust from the 20 million years that the Earth, that the solar system had been. But when it landed, it was less than two inches of dust. So that blew their whole story. But then they said it must have been a lot of solar winds that happened and caused the dust to fly off the moon. I always got a story. I always got a story. But when I'm standing here and telling you about this unknown God, let me tell you how I know who this unknown God is. Not only that, but I'm going to give him a name. And when I give him a name, you can go down to Nazareth and check him out. But not only do you have to go to Nazareth, let me tell you what cities I just came out of. And you're going to ask him what he done done. Because wherever we step, our testimony should change somebody. We should be at water to change rocks, to make them crack, to make them break, to make them cry. There should be that word in us that's stronger than any fast-flowing water that'll cause people to ask themselves, can I make it tomorrow without this unknown God? Can we do it? Can we stand strong and say, you know what? I done, I, done, I done graduated high school. I went to some college. I done done this. I can make this, Lord. I'll catch you tomorrow. Can we do that? So you have to question, and Paul had to explain all these temples around this mountain and focus them <coughs> back to God. Yes. But then you have a people who were so smart, but they were so uh-huh. self absorbed. Come on, Paul, tell us about it. Tell us about it. Let us hear it. But then when they started hearing, and it started breaking their hard-headedness and their historical information, what happened? Something started to change. Now, if, if we are consistent and persistent in walking toward people with our testimony, how often are they going to come wrong to us? How often are they going to question us about who we are, why we stand the way we stand? How can we still stand when everything around us is falling? Mm. Can we give them a straight up answer? So it's, 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 it's that one thing that we have to look at that causes us to change not just how we walk, but how other people flow around us. 
time. You know, if we, if we, if we are who we say we are, the, 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 the most hard-headed people will become our friends. I had a, when I, when I worked at uh, F. Atticum as a process operator, I was an outside operator going to the inside uh, on the control board. That's a guy named Doug was supposed to train me. Doug hated me from the day one. <laughs> Doug act wanted to, every, every time I was on shift with him, he wanted to go to Flower Road and fight. I'm a brown girl. I can take you. I say, dude, what do, do I look like I want to fight? So when we come, come to train, for three years, Doug wouldn't deal with me. Right? Outside operator, he inside. He's supposed to call me on the radio, let me know what's going on. Wouldn't tell me. I had to walk the unit. So most 12 hour shift, I was outside 10 hours because he was making it hard. But when I worked with him, I would, bring, I would bring breakfast for me and for him. And I did this consistently for three years. So when he had to train me, he would get up and walk out the I say, fine, you walk out, I'm walking out with you. Whatever you're doing, I'm, I start mimicking him. But I still was bringing him breakfast on if we work mornings. And if I bought dinner, I bought him dinner. Now, after I, after I had ascended to control board operator, we switched shifts, right? Doug getting married two years later. I got an engagement party. I walk into the engagement party. He stopped the DJ, right? He said, I want to tell y'all, this is one of my best friends. He said, my truck, we live in Boma. He said, my truck broke down in Jasper. And I, the only person I knew I could call was Kevin because I knew he would be the only one to drive up there. You know, that's a good drive from Boma to Jasper. Yeah. Drove up there to get him to come back so he can get his truck to go back and pull that truck back. He said, I knew you were the only one that would be there. 